Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero. J Man Speaks coming to you live. That's right. We got J Man's at Talks number 28. I don't know who cares about the number, uh, but today we're talking about enhancing your video consciousness with my man, John Baron McSherry. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you for being here with us today, sir. Taking some time out of your busy schedule. Uh, why don't you, for the folks who don't know, you just kind of quick introduction, who you are, company you work with, uh, a little bit about what, you know, who you are and what you do. Sure. So my name is John Baron McSherry, which I usually don't use my middle name, but thank you for including it. JBM. Um, yes, JBM. I am a real estate investor, real estate uh, broker, associate broker with Douglas Elliman, and I'm also a social media influencer. I, I create a, a ton of content, just really documenting what I do day by day, um, showing just about everything I do. I I try to include everybody and show them behind the scenes. Um, I've been in real estate for over 10 years, started as a uh, investor. Then I moved to, I got my license as an agent. And then from there, just started documenting everything about like about three to four years ago. You know, I hired a real estate coach. And the first thing he said to me was, I want you to make videos and make cold calls. I was like, those are two things I don't want to do. But he's like, you're paying me, so you got to do it. So I did it. And uh it just it just changed my life, changed my business, and uh, and now we're here. So thank you. Nice, nice. I I, I love that. Is it so? We always kind of try to start in the beginning. And for those of you wondering mm -hmm. what my shirt says, it, it was all a dream. We used to read realtor magazines. Uh, so where where did it start for you? At what point did you say, "Man, this looks like fun and easy. I think I'm gonna get get into it." Like what prompted mm -hmm. you? What what was what made you go after it in the beginning? Sure. So I was actually living in my aunt's garage. It was a half a garage. I uh, I moved to New York from Philly. I went to college in Philly and I studied design and uh, came to New York, moved in with her and uh, I was just looking for a job and I just became incredibly inspired. You know, she bought her house, you know, 20 years ago, it tripled in value. And I also had nothing else to do but watch TV at that time freshly graduated from college and I just watched right. HGTV every day and it just, <laughs> you and it everybody just inspired else, right? me. Yeah. Exactly. And so you were investor first, agent mm -hmm. second. So exactly. You, what, what was it? Flip that house. What was the show that, what was your show that you were watching and you were like, yo, this is it. Well, it was a lot of different shows. So like I loved, um, there was a color show. I forgot what it was called. It was, um, color splash. And that, and that's something that really inspired me coming from a design background and then um, I think flip that house and house hunters and just and just everything. Just for me, design brought me into real estate. I was like, wow, this is really cool. Instead of designing 2D, creating graphics and packaging, you could actually buy a house, fix it up, design the entire house. You could stage it and then sell it and make money. I was like, wow, that's that's really cool. So, so your design background is it like interior design? Is it like architectural? What what's what's the specialty? It's it's industrial design, which is the design of everyday okay. things. So it's products, packaging, graphics, and and interiors, but really just about uh, design to improve the quality of life, whether it's making things more ergonomic or making the color better, making it more functional. So for me, moving into real estate was kind of a natural progression. People always say to me, like, like design and real estate, those two don't mix. But for me, it's it was the perfect transition. And so your first flip, what, what was that like? Where did you buy it? How did you pick it? Was it a disaster? <laughs> you know? well, well, sure. I mean, there, there were definitely some disasters. You know, uh, the first couple of flips I did was with partners and nobody knew what they were doing. Nobody wanted to do the work and they were just a complete disaster. But the first successful flip was more like a house hack. I, I bought a condo uh, myself in 2011 renovated that condo, moved into it. And then I went to a Rich Dad Poor Dad conference and they were like, well, the property you live in is a liability. You need to look for assets. I was like, crap, I just bought this property, just renovated it. Now I need to, now I need to sell it. So that was technically my first flip. Um, but after that, in 2015, I bought a loan. I bought a property in uh, Valley Stream and that, that was disgusting. I mean, it smelled like cat pee. There was water leaking through the ceiling. I mean, it was a complete disaster. Water coming into the basement. It was it was pretty bad. That's good. You know, and and that's part of, you know, our our vision here on J Man's Ed Talks is real stories, right? Mm -hmm. You know, rather you come on and be like, yeah, man, everyone I touch turned to gold. 
First one, bam. Second one, bam. Making millions of dollars. It's like, yo, man, some of them don't work out. Sometimes, you know, a lot right. of this is so speculative where you're, mm -hmm. you're guessing where the market's going. You're thinking this is a great area on the come up. You know, like there's so many different factors to consider. Right. Uh, so th that was 2015, the Valley Stream one. And that's that's in Long Island for those of you who are outside of New York uh, who mm -hmm. may not know the area. That's Nassau, Nassau County yes. still, right? Yes, it is. Nassau County. Nassau County. Okay. And so then from there, did you say, okay, I want to keep doing this. And then how, how did you start picking your areas? Cause you're, you're in Nassau, but you mm -hmm. do, you do the flips all over. I've seen you in mm -hmm. Harlem world. I've seen you recently mm -hmm. in Philly, like right. all over. So how, how do you, is it basic, basic, you know, where the deals are will take you there or, or what? Sure. Some tips that or that and I also basically have three different businesses. You know, I'm a real estate agent, associate broker. Then I'm a real estate flipper, right? So I buy, fix, and flip. And for the flipping, I try to stay within a half an hour to an hour away from where I live in Nassau County. And then I'm also a wholesaler. And as a wholesaler, you could pretty much go anywhere in the entire country because you're basically locking up a deal to purchase it in contract. And then you're selling that contract. So you're not really selling real estate. You're selling the rights to own the property, right? Or sometimes I sell the LLC that I'm I, I'm purchasing the property. And, and when I'm wholesaling, I could I could do that anywhere. So as you mentioned, Philly. So I'm wholesaling in Philly, New Jersey, Florida, all over the country for that business. And how do you find those? Are you referred to deals or, or is there kind of just... I mean, how do, how do you find it? Because I think that's that's the word I hear from, you know, not just real estate agents, but also mm -hmm. investors. It's like it's hard to find the deals with mm -hmm. so many amateurs who watch HGTV who are like, right. I'm going to pay whatever for this property because the market's so hot. I'm going to add a kitchen. It's going to double the value. Like, you know, right. it's not, they're not right. realistic in their numbers. So how do you find the deals? That's true. And, you know, there are a lot of people bidding on, on properties that are either listed or at auction. So that's why the prices go up. You also have people that are looking for a primary residence sometimes at the auction, you know, like an end user. That's why the prices go so high. So what we do in order to get a deal is we do marketing directly to the homeowner. And marketing is a big part of each one of my businesses, whether it's the brokerage side, uh, the flipping side and the wholesale side. But the main way to get good deals is the marketing. Um, so we do, we collect data. We spend a ton of money on data. We spend a ton of money on, you know, uh, cold calling, you know, we have cold callers. I do cold calling myself. We do text messaging, we do emails, we do social media. So really the only way to get good deals is to do the marketing yourself, not just look, not just to, you know, buy something on the market or to go to the auction. You could also buy other people's wholesale deals. You know, I buy other investors wholesale deals and they buy mine. So uh, it's really just about, you know, networking and marketing. So when you, when you talk about the marketing, is it like a I buy houses, any condition kind of a thing? Are you doing it with paper? Are you doing it with signage? Are you doing it with social media? Are you targeting? What's the strategy there? Because I think sales and marketing are both lost arts and I think you're really great at it. I feel like you're going to spin off and do a show soon. Uh, I, I don't so. know. We'll see, see what happens <laughs> with that. that. On it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'd love to be at it. So yeah. uh, what, what's the message like and, and what, what mediums are you using for that? Sure. So you're right. And it's all of the above. So we do mailers. Um, it is the I buy houses. Um, you know, we have a website uh, that that people could go to, you know, we use SEO, um, you know, and it's really just about collecting the data. So it's really, for instance, we'll use a website like ListSource and you could collect data, whether it's you're looking for pre foreclosures, absentee homeowners, um, out of state, absentee, in state absentee um you know it's really just looking for people to help and people that are in distress um and finding ways to 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 purchase that house cash so that they don't lose the house and it's really just about finding people that need help and helping them before they lose it you know and giving them a cash offer because a lot of these properties are not mortgageable a lot of these properties can't be listed by an agent and if they can be listed by an agent we we will list it or we will refer to another agent but really, it's just about finding people that are in such distress that they have to sell the house now. And we buy houses cash, and, and that's the message.
you know. Yeah, and I think maybe is is it more beneficial to be in markets or judicial states like New York or I think Pennsylvania is the same as us where the foreclosure process takes a long time and maybe somebody is distressed and behind and it's almost impossible to catch up and agents don't want to list it because it's a short sale and that could be a challenge, you know, depending on how much they owe and that. I and mean, do you focus more on the judicial states or it's just kind of like wherever you can find it, you'll go? Wherever we find it, we go because sometimes it's not even about the foreclosure. Sometimes it's just absentee owners with um, tenants that are not paying or the right. uh, tenants and the house is a complete disaster. You know, there's a property that we're actually locking up in contract right now in Tallahassee where, you know, the one unit is beautiful, renovated. Uh, the owner is absentee. He lives in another state. He has no idea what's going on. The other unit is a complete disaster. It's filled with animals. Uh, you know, there's feces all over the place. Um, you know, a tree fell in the house. You know, it's not not sellable on the market. You can't show the property, and Sounds it's a like really a difficult situation. <laughs> but but it's also a deal. But it's also a risk. So you know, it is a great opportunity. But you need to also know what you're doing, have the education, be willing to take on that kind of risk, and know that things are going to happen. Like we're going to open up those walls, and it's going to be a complete disaster. But that's the reality of this business. You know. Right. And, and I love that because some people don't realize that, oh, yeah, sure, you, you made a decent amount of profit on the last investment, but that's because you had all the risk, right? The contractors right. coming in, doing the work for you. You know, I, we used to, my wife and I used to flip houses years ago when we could buy them right oh, in oh. our market. And it was always the, the contractor, like, you guys are making all the money. Well, well, we're taking all the risks too. You don't know about the ones that we break even or the ones that we lose money on. You know, mm -hmm. just to kind of keep the, the the workers, your contractors happy sometimes. Um, let me put this shout out out there. If you're watching this and I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of opportunity once this COVID-19 opens up a little bit with tenants who didn't pay because they couldn't be evicted. So if you have a client who has, you know, absentee landlord who has a tenant that didn't pay and they wrecked the property, they finally get them evicted and they, they're like, we're done contact John McSherry, wherever you are in the United States. Okay. Be happy to help you out Thank because you. you know, when people are getting evicted and they know it, <laughs> then it gets worse, right? I mean, then it definitely gets worse. Definitely gets worse. I've seen some crazy things, but let, let's, let's take that. Let's get into the video side of things because that's what drew me to you. Uh, initially when I was watching your, I want to say it's IG, that's Instagram for those of you who aren't social media literate. Uh, I, I was on your IG and, and I love the way you told the story of your, your properties, your investments, like the flip process. Like I could watch your journey through it. And I felt like that really excelled above the other content that was out there. And I think that's what kind of set you apart from the competition. Cause there's a lot of people that go, yeah, we bought a house today. Yeah, we're going to be flipping it. Here's a before. And then here's the after. Like they don't mm -hmm. document the journey. So what is, what is that like? Like explain your process. Cause I feel, and I said this on Instagram earlier live, like that's, it's the secret sauce, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, that makes the difference between content creators. I'm not, I didn't want to bring you on and just say, Hey, you do video. Yeah, I do video. Is it great? Yeah, it's great. You know, like how do you come up with the ideas? How do you mm -hmm. take the shots and then, at, you know, produce that end product? Sure, sure. Well, I, I think it really all comes down to like that Gary Vee model of like just document, like focus on documenting, not creating. And like the creation happens in the process by documenting. And, you know, I really, you know, I'm really grateful that I hired that real estate coach. And he's like, just just get out there and document what you're doing. You know, he said, you have to make these videos every day. And I went out and made videos every day, whether I was out showing a property, whether I was looking at a property, flipping a property, wholesaling a property. If I was in Manhattan, if I was on Long Island, Queens, Brooklyn, I would just document everything. Like that was the reality right. of my day to day. Right. And I do it in multiple ways. And you talked about story. Um, I tell stories in different ways and I use different mediums mediums and um sometimes i have help sometimes i don't but the majority of it is just me walking through my day taking out my cell phone and being conscious of the fact that something may or may not happen or being conscious that this is this looks cool let me take a picture let me take a photo of it let me record it or do it in slow motion or reverse and then i'll mess with it later but just get it like document it now and figure it out later yeah so i, I like what you said because that brings us to 
video consciousness, but mm-hmm. being conscious of it. And I think that's the first step for so many people is, mm-hmm. okay, you, you know, you have to do video. Like, let's not even get into that right now. You know, you have to do video. And some of you are forced into it because you had no choice because of the pandemic. So that's the positive for you guys. But mm-hmm. now you, you know, you have to do it, but to be conscious of it throughout your day going, man, I have this on my schedule today. What can I document? And I think break it down just a little bit further because it's like when you're driving there or somebody else is driving, right, to be safe. When you're driving there, when you're there walking around the property, when you get in the property, when you start doing stuff, like every stage of that should be documented, right? Right. Every stage. And so do you – some of it goes to the story and then some of it kind of goes to like just create – rolls of video, if you will, that you can kind of piece together later on. Some of it you may not use, some of it you will, right? Right. How, sure. How do you? Well, a good example is I'm going to go live right now and I'm just going <laughs> to document what I'm doing. So, yeah. so just give me one second. So right now I'm live with uh, J-Man Monero and we are on his Facebook page. So um, I hope you guys come check us out and we're going to post it later, but Really, you know, whenever I have a thought or an idea, I just start filming. So right now we're going live and right. um, I'm also going to record some content. I'm, I'm going to take this live video, chop it up and use it later. But really, it's just about like document everything. You know, um, I document my footsteps. I document getting a cup of coffee, opening yes, the door, yeah. you know, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So like every little detail, just document it and figure it out later. And if the video sucks, don't use it. Just just keep creating, keep documenting, and you'll figure it out. Yeah, and it's it's those little – it's like the, you know, they said the devil's in the details. Like those little things like the walk up, the coffee, like all that's like – it's very cinematic rather than like here I am, here I am, right. here I am, here I am. <laughs> you know, it's like because right. – you, people get bored of a talking head. It's all that B-roll footage is what what any videographer would call it, the B-roll, all that little yes. stuff that you think is unimportant, but it makes such a difference in, in the end product. Um, so do you do your own editing or do you outsource that or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. You know, um, What I like to do is, like you said, B-roll. B-roll is very important. People want to see behind the scenes. People want to see what's going on. Like that's reality TV and that's and that's right. – why they're following you to see the real you, but also it's good to create a, a shiny, you know, product and to do something that's that's finished and more professional. Especially as a salesperson, you know, you want to put out something that is, you know, polished. Maybe if it's a video tour or if you want to do a bio. Um, and I like to show kind of like a variation. So sometimes I'll have someone follow me around, document what I'm doing, and then he'll he'll chop it up and put his spin on it, and then I'll document myself being documented and, and right. show that as well. The B-roll to the B-roll. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The B-roll to the B-roll. <laughs> That's fantastic. And so then how, because some of that is it's your investment business. Do you find mm-hmm. that being an investor helps you with your, your other bit, you know, really being a real estate agent, like with you, do clients come to you and ask for your advice? Do you bring that into a listing presentation? Do you not talk about it? Uh, Because I would imagine it would be hard for them not to know what you do and not follow you. And then also Mm -hmm. do you friend them or allow them to follow you on your social media stuff? I guess there's a couple questions in there. Sure. And for Instagram Live, uh, the question is, I have the investment business. I have the sales business. How do I integrate the two? And do I? Uh, I do. And what's what's really great about being an investor and being an agent is that I could tell my clients, I could say, hey, listen, I'm in your shoes right now. I'm in your shoes every day. I'm making offers on properties. I'm selling my own properties. I understand what you're going through. And it's a way for you to relate. And we all have a way to relate with our clients. For me, that's what works for me. I'm passionate about investing. I love it. Right. That's what got me into real estate. So I talk about that. And my clients also see the passion that I feel for for real estate, for the structure, for the process. And also when documenting on social media, my clients see that, okay, well, I really believe in the product. I believe in what I do. I do it myself. Um, It's not that I'm just telling you to buy or trying to tell you what to do, but I'm also doing it myself. And also people do love the before and afters. They love HGTV. So uh, for me, showing that on my social media uh, is just another way for me to connect. But maybe for you, it might be cooking or 
you know, it, it might be another way for you to connect with your audience, you know, and right. we all have our own personal spin, uh, spin on things and our own personality. But for me, it's real estate investing. Yeah. And, and I love, cause I always talk about that when people, you know, say, well, I don't bring that much to the table with real estate, you know, but it's, it's, it's experience, education, and expertise is the three E's mm -hmm. I always talk about. Like your education and design that plays into everything that you do in real estate. When you're talking mm -hmm. to somebody about their house and how they should place this and the colors and this and all that, all that would come into it. Your expertise as a real estate investor, you know, where the returns are, you know, what's trending right now, you know, what people like, you know, what, you know, how, how the offers are coming and, and all of that. And then, you know, your your experience is how long you've been in the business. It's going on 10 years, right? I think almost a decade. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you were around mm -hmm. post post 2000. You got in right after the the bust, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those yes. you were like, there's opportunity there. Let's right. Oh, yeah. And so you, you bring that. So when you when you're talking about your real estate business, do you focus on like you live in in Nassau County, right in Long Island? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then do you focus on just that area or again, is it where it takes you or do you have like a team or do you have other people you can refer to? How does that work? Sure. So, well, first I'd like to say thank you everyone on IG live for joining me. Uh, you can catch the rest on Facebook. So we'll end that and then we're going to end that and then post it, share to IGTV. And Oh, you can download the video, which is something we talked about. I can now do that yeah. on my Instagram. But to answer your question, you know, um, I'm kind of everywhere and I do have a team. I do have some people that help me out in Manhattan and Long Island. Like I have a buyer's agent out here. I have a, um, an agent in Manhattan that helps me with showings and listings. And um, my thing is my sphere of influence is, is pretty large. So I just go where my sphere is. So I cover right. everything from almost like Manhattan to Montauk, I say, but I really don't go too much into Suffolk County only when I really have to, but it's really just like, those are my boundaries. I don't go into Staten Island. I don't really go into Westchester. Um, so I just kind of stick to where I go. Manhattan's like, you know, 20, 30 minutes away from me. So it's an easy commute to get there. Without um, traffic. Exactly. So <laughs> that's, that's really my focus. And really also documenting that, documenting, you know, that, that hustle and, and that, you know, getting to different areas and, and, and that also has a certain energy to it that I think is unique to what I do showing that I'm kind of everywhere and it's kind of crazy and fun. Um, that may not work for everyone and I may not recommend it, but that's just part of who I am and, uh, what I enjoy. Well, and, and I, I like that you said, okay, you have a, a, a guy in Manhattan and you got somebody mm -hmm. on long Island cause really two entirely different markets. And, and I'm seeing a lot of agents downstate that, that have that model they're they're working in long island as well as manhattan because you have to be knowledgeable in both markets and having somebody right. that's a buyer's agent that can say hello oh, this building this guy you know every building is different in manhattan every doorman can be different the amenities are different you know so there's right. there's so many factors in there where if you're if you don't know then you should maybe stay in your area and not just go, Oh, I want to go to Manhattan because there's money to right. be made. Like it's, right. it's part of the code of ethics is that, you know, we, we stay in our lane, if you will, don't op sure. operate outside the, 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 uh, scope of your expertise. And so sure, I, sure. I, I love that you said that. So getting back to the video, any mm -hmm. kind of special equipment, because I think those who are like the very analytical personality types who might be watching now are like, John, what kind of equipment do you use? What kind of camera? What kind of light? What kind of microphone? I can't get started until I have everything I need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your message for them? So for me, it's really just about starting. It's about, you know, the quantity, not the quality. Um, and for me, I just use my iPhone. That's it. It's that simple. And when I edit my own videos, yeah. I use iMovie. And it's just I use iMovie on my phone. It's not really even that, you know, crazy. Um when I use a videographer, they'll use Premiere and Adobe and they'll use a professional camera and they'll go super high end. But for me, it's really just about, I mean, I love photography. I love making videos. So I try to have the best iPhone because I love the new cameras and I love the functionality. But really, nice, yeah. you know, I don't get that, you know, um, crazy with it. And um, my advice is just start, you know, just get started. Don't worry about the equipment. Um, the equipment's never going to be perfect. It's always going to change. And really what I find is that your audience is going to connect to the real you, the message, um, and 
also if it's too perfect and too polished, I feel like then it gets glazed over and becomes a commercial. So I feel like if it's raw, if it's real, imperfect, I feel like that's gonna help you connect with your audience for sure. Yeah, fantastic. I, I love that you said that. Like stop thinking, start doing. I, so many people are going, I'm, I'm thinking about doing it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the right equipment. I'm thinking and it's like, just pull out your damn phone and start doing, right? You wanna add to your story? I got an idea. Every day you have a story add to it the little things right. that you do throughout your day and then and i will say you know iphone or android here's here's my android s10 uh, and they just went to an s20 which really makes me mad um okay. but you know it has has the three lenses on the one side and then it has the the two selfie selfie lenses on the other side which is similar to the iphone cool. it it sure, does sure. make the difference huge difference i've noticed in the photos and the videos that you make so uh, we will say you don't need special equipment. Just get the most up the most up to date smartphone. If you have an iPhone single digit, like it's time to upgrade. I guess that would be the, right. iPhone single or Android single digit. It's time for you to upgrade. Get in, get into the double digits because the the lenses do make a difference. The way hey, we got we got your little guy. What's, what what's your son's name? Thomas. Thomas, the TikTok sensation sweeping the nation. Yeah. That's right. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. The dancing. Is it the dancing real estate agent dancing? Yeah. What's what's your TikTok handle? TikTok is uh, dancing agent. Dancing, dancing agent. agent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have fun with uh, it, you know? Oh, yeah. hundred percent. So that's funny. Let's segue into that. Uh, sure. What made you, because I think so many people, in, and again, not to stereotype, but in, in higher end luxury markets, sometimes they're like, it's, I don't have time for that stuff. That's for the kids. <laughs> right. Right. And, and so how yeah. do you, what, what's your message to them? Because I feel like you're, you're having fun. Who cares? You know, and, 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 and we did a recent, we did a recent survey and hundred percent of the people who were surveyed said mm -hmm. that if they have the choice between a fun realtor and a non-fun realtor, 100% of the people choose the fun one. Okay. I was the only one who was asked in the survey and I conducted it, but <laughs> I feel, <laughs> I feel that it's, it's gotta be accurate, right? All of the things being the same, yeah. like regardless of how much money you're worth or how much money you make, human mm -hmm. beings still want to have fun. I think Cindy Lauper had it right. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Not and just it's like, no, no, and and really, people want to know who who the real you is. And listen, if you don't want to have fun, then then don't act like you're a fun person. But if you like to have fun, have fun. And, and you know, people follow you because they they like who you are, and they like your personality. And that's another thing is a lot of people are afraid of the way they look, or like I look this way. Or, but people know what you look like, so you know, you just got to show the real you. And if the real you likes to dance and have fun, or likes to cook, or likes to you know, do whatever, like just show it and right. people will connect on a much deeper level with you. So I definitely agree. Yeah. It's, and it's, uh, even if you don't know how to dance, that can be fun exactly. too, because yeah, yeah, exactly. let's face it, man. Some of those TikTok, some of those TikTok dances, I try, bro. I try and it oh, turns out yeah. doing one of these jump offs and then I'm lost. And then I'm like, you know what? That's going to get posted. Cause I'm not right. perfect. I got rhythm. Right. But some of these, yeah. it takes choreography Stop. and practice to get it down. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and and for those of you who are wondering about the demographics of TikTok, okay, there's well over a billion users on there. And over 3%, 30%, I'm sorry, over 30% are over the age of 30. So one third mm -hmm. of those 1 billion users, which is roughly 300 million people mm -hmm. are over the age of 30. And the largest growing demographic and the largest transfer of wealth in our nation, which is happening now, will happen in the next five to 10 years, is the boomers leaving all their money to the millennials. Those millennials, we suck and we're sorry. No. Okay. They're, they're going to be the richest people in America, and they are currently the largest generation that's purchasing homes. And they're on TikTok. Okay. So yeah. don't, don't, uh, don't sleep on this and think it's for kids because everything was for kids until it wasn't. And then you got in late to the party, right? Instagram, Facebook, all of that stuff. It was like, all the kids are going to Instagram these days. And now it's like, everybody's on there. Well, what's the right. next thing? I I think it is TikTok. 
uh, what do you do you you export some of that stuff because I think that's a good tip to, to get people. Even if you don't have a huge following on there, you just go on there to people watch and do you know a video every once in a while. You export those right, and then you share those on your different platforms. Correct. Yeah, and yeah. you know I was actually just watching in. Instagram this morning with my son, just looking for ideas, looking for new videos to create an inspiration. Right. And it's something that we do to bond, but we also have fun creating the videos. And I actually get a lot more engagement on the dancing videos, believe it or not. So, um, you know, people like to see you having fun, like you said. And I was a little late to get onto TikTok, but um, I started I so. as soon as I felt inspired. Yeah, I yeah. hope not. But, um, but you were right about everything you said, you know, Instagram, people said, oh, it's for kids, this and that. And then now it's like mainstream, you know, and everyone's on it. So I tell agents all the time, just get on TikTok. Even if you don't understand it, you have no idea what you're doing. Just get on it, start watching, start creating. And, um, you know, it's a really interesting platform. I love the the editing uh, features and you yeah. can really have fun with it and do something special and different. So how do you choose your platforms with the, with the content that you're creating? Because I think some people may be overwhelmed with like, okay, okay, I gotta be on Facebook uh, uh, and LinkedIn. Oh my God. And and what about Twitter? And 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 then there's Instagram. Oh my, and then now you're throwing TikTok into the mix. I don't right. know what to do, so I'm gonna do nothing. I think, mm -hmm. right? That's what some people that are at that point. How do you choose the platform that's right for you? Or how do you decide kind of what to put where, or do you put everything everywhere? <laughs> great question, great question. Yeah. Yeah. It's something. That I think really needs to be addressed for most people because they do have that fear about starting. But for me, I just keep it simple. Um, I make one piece of content, and I post it on everything. And for me, it's about simplicity. Uh, but you know, each platform engages differently. Um, you know, I'll post something, it'll crush it on Instagram, and then nobody will even see it. Like the algorithm won't even see it on Facebook, and, and then vice right. versa. And I find that posts that are more about like accolades or about like family does really well on Facebook. Uh, posts that are really energetic and fun and dancing and do really well on Instagram because it's more of a visual platform. But for me, I just keep it simple, post it everywhere. And again, it's not about quality, it's about quantity. So I want everyone to see it. Um, I want to remind people every day that, you know, that I'm here, I do real estate. If they need help, you know, without talking about real estate and without selling right. anyone, say, hey, I'm here. I want to entertain you. I want to engage with you, you know. Don't forget about me. I want to hear more about you. And I engage with people a lot too. And that's something important for the viewers is it's not just about putting out, but you need to give back. You need to like other people's posts. You need to comment, engage as much as possible if you want to grow your following. And that's something that really helped me grow my following is not only putting out, but, you know, giving back as well. And so it, it goes back to like what you said earlier, document the hustle. I think that should be a t-shirt. Yeah. Document I like that hustle, right? Because it's, it's, letting people know that you're busy, that you're in the business to stay top of mind. And like stories is the most underutilized tool. I feel to stay mm -hmm. top of mind. Cause you're literally top of mind. You're the circle above my, my main feed is mm -hmm. people who, who post on a regular basis to their story. Right. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to remember, Oh, John, New York, Manhattan, Harlem, Long Island. Right. Cause you're, you keep yeah. hitting me with this stuff. Right. And you, you don't have to run into me in key food and be like, Oh, Jerry, how are you? Oh, you know, John, you're in real estate, right? Oh, I wish I knew. I just bought, sold, built, you know, might as well stab me in the eye with a rusty screwdriver when you say that. But it's it's my fault if they don't think that I'm busy enough or right. knowledgeable enough, let's say, or not too busy because that's the flip side of it when they go, oh, you know, I didn't want to bother you with that $5 million North Shore property, John. Um, you know, you just look so busy. <laughs> it's being approachable without saying that, like what you said about, Hey, I I'm awesome. I just sold another one, just listed another one. I got an award. Aren't I important? Like none of that's in your, in any, anything that you do is just showing your personality. Right. Exactly. It's like you want to do it. And by the way, I'm creating content right now. Oh. Um, you want to do it in a way where you are just looking to you know help educate entertain it's really not about you know celebrating educate. yourself right you know um you don't want to just celebrate yourself you want to find ways to bring value and i think that that's a really important part and maybe it's just documenting what you're doing and just showing 
um, how to how to do something. You know, um, I just saw one friend posted today that he was learning how to install a vinyl floor, and I thought that was interesting. I learned something about installing vinyl floors. So, um, well, did he look just, on YouTube to figure it out? <laughs> I don't know what he did. He just he just went live and just started installing a floor. He's like, "This is how you install a floor." That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he got my attention. One time, I tried to do ceramic tile floors from a YouTube video on a rental property, and then I stopped the video before I saw the part that said I was supposed to wipe off the grout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I was exhausted. Went to bed. Next day, went over there. Mm -hmm. The grout is hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. If you want to learn from YouTube videos, you got to be sure to watch the whole video. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> so what else, anything else you kind of want to leave them with to enhance their video consciousness? Um, can we have a question from candy actually, what's your IG? So w w maybe you could type that in the comments or I'll type it in the comments. Sure. Is, I don't know if I'm it, allowed to type comments, but, okay. um, you can maybe type it, but I'll say it too. Uh, it's just my name. Well, my first and last name is John dot McSherry. So J O H N dot M C S H E R R Y. And that's my Instagram. Instagram. So what I'll do is I'll do the whole link Instagram.com slash awesome. John dot McSherry Instagram. Thank you. So they can just click through from the book face Instagram.com slash John McSherry. So enhancing your video consciousness, anything else, any other tips for them on a daily basis? Cause I feel like you're you're similar to me where it's like, okay, as you're going, you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. What about for the planners that need to go, I want to map out my entire next 365 days of content creation. How can you help them to enhance their, their you know, to stop thinking and start doing? Hmm. That's tough because, you know, I feel like the magic happens in the reality and a lot of it you can't really plan for, but you can plan like, okay, well today I want to look at a property today or tomorrow I'm going to work with a buyer. The next day I'm going to work with a seller and I'm going to try to grab some content there, but then just try to let it like free flow and just kind of create. And, um, I'm making a live video <laughs> and just so like that, like things happen and just include it and just celebrate it. And that's, and that's where the magic happens is you don't want to plan it too much. Cause then it, it just seems like, you know, like you're reading a script. You don't want to read a script. Um, for me, even when I'm cold calling, like I have ideas, and I'll have notes and bullet points, but I just let it free flow and I just focus on, you know, creating um, a connection, building a relationship and just kind of letting it and just seeing where it goes. But I would say my best content is the most random, you know, right. stuff, right? So having those surprises, so plan, but also allow it to kind of take its own form. Yeah, I like that. Let it flow and don't, I guess the, the, the theme of the day would be like, don't take yourself too serious right i think yes, uh I it's, it's so people are like what's my brand i have to really dial into how i want to be seen how about you just be seen as who you are and i think that's mm -hmm. the easiest thing for people to do just well i don't know what to say and it just be yourself and say what you would normally say to a client like i'm talking to you face to face virtually it's the same conversation like i would have whether we were at a coffee shop whether we were in front of a house it's the same conversation you're doing it every day it's how you look, right? I mean, that's one of my taglines. It's how you look. So you got to get over yourself. You're seeing clients every day unless you go and see them with a paper bag on your head. And that's weird. Okay. There's, <laughs> there might be counseling available for you. Um, but just get over yourself already and, and, and start doing it. Right. So what's next? What's next for you, man? You got anything on the horizon you want to kind of promote? Yeah, sure. So a few things. So I'm actually working on a, a marketing uh, show where I want to have you on as my my first guest. So we're working on that. And um, we're, we, we were talking about some ideas together and um, we actually came up with the name uh, McSherry's Marketing Magic. So, so that's something that I'm working on right now. And um, really what it's going to be about is is just you know helping other agents and other entrepreneurs learn more about marketing and just ideas of uh, creating content across all platforms and we're also going to maybe have a contest element like like a challenge for each uh, show and it's going to be I like that. Uh, once a week aiming for mondays at one o'clock and um we're going to give a challenge the viewers will do the challenge and then we're going to vote on the winner not necessarily based on 
who makes the most you know polished video, but who really created the most engagement um, and really you know worked the hardest and really did a good job from that aspect. Nice. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And then I also have a a real estate uh, flipping course coming out called Millionaire Flip Secrets, where we're going to teach um, people the you know beginners how to get started in that business. And a lot of what we talked about earlier about the marketing aspects, which is really important, um, how to find the opportunities. And that's and that's what we're gonna teach the viewers. And if you guys wanna learn more, you could ask me on Instagram about it. So will that be like an online course that they can kind of just take like a video course, something like that? It will be. And the first group will be a beta group where that group will get in and get to you know be hands-on with me where we're gonna, we're, we're going to create the content for the course together and you could ask any question you want and then after that beta group it's going to be a course that's going to be completed that a viewer could uh join and just watch the videos and learn uh, but there's also going to be a group coaching element as well awesome so you want more information on that you're going to go to instagram.com slash john dot mcsherry's hit them in the dms that's direct message <laughs> for you folks who are unfamiliar Hit them with a DM and just say, hey, what's up with this uh, mil millionaire flip, flip secrets? secrets? Yep. Millionaire flip secrets. MPS. I like acronyms. The yeah. MPS yeah. program. You can be a part of it. Beta program. Obviously, when you get in on the ground floor, there's better opportunities for you. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till all your friends have taken it and are making a lot of money. Okay. And you're trying right. to, you're all in the mustard and can't catch up at that point. <laughs> um, let's see here. One other thing I want to, oh, let's do this. Let's give them. A task. Let's task them with something from you. Okay. Because is your is your first show going to be six one at one? It will be. Okay, so that's June first. That's this Monday, June first at one p.m. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're um, Candy Bowen's watching, she's from Arizona. Actually, they're on Pacific now, but they'll be Mountain in the fall. Uh, so mm -hmm. Candy, for you, that'd be ten o'clock pacific time um you guys could do the math i'm tired of doing math with time zones and stuff with everybody <laughs> all over we had somebody was watching one of our shows in hawaii and i'm trying to do the math i'm like that's like five hours i'm like okay yeah so what, what do you want to task them with let's let's so let's an assignment let's give them a video project um you guys could also look at the challenge we did last time so last time we did a seven day uh challenge we called it the mcsherry challenge which which kind of inspired the idea for this marketing show and uh we gave them a lot of great projects the first project we gave was um or one of my favorite projects was create like a cribs video of your own house because we're all quarantined right so like you That's know fun. a good way to start creating content is give a tour uh, we probably can't get into a lot of houses right now. If you can, that's great. But I would suggest to make a tour. If you want to give a tour of your bathroom or your kitchen or a room that you celebrate or even your balcony or your backyard, um, I'd like to see I'd like to see a tour. You don't necessarily have to show yourself if you're not comfortable yet, which is what I like about this project is you're able to start working with your voice and visuals. Um, so just give us a tour. Uh, you could tag Drayman and I, or you could uh, put it under hashtag McSherry challenge and, and we will take a look at it together and you can look at the challenge posts from, from prior and then we'll keep you posted. Will it be the same hashtag? Same hashtag? Uh, we'll probably have a new, a new hashtag or maybe the same, but I think we got to figure that out. Okay. But, um, but if you wanted to do it before the show starts, you could do that or just tag us in it. Or if you want to send it to us directly and then we'll start that conversation. So really it's just about giving uh, a Cribs tour of your own house. So we would love to yeah. see that. So make a Cribs tour. And, and I would say, look at, have fun with it. I, If you notice of any of the content that's being created, I think people are so stir crazy that are trapped in their house. They're like, F it. I'm done. I can't take this anymore. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And then that's when the real magic, that makes Sherry magic, baby. That's when it happens. When mm -hmm. people are like, I'm done hiding who I am. I can't take it. I want you guys to see. I've seen there's a realtor my market who came up with this cook. He's called the messy chef, a cooking show. That's funny. You mentioned that earlier. Like all these things are the true essence of who people are. Cause once they go mm -hmm. crazy, they're like, I can't, I can't put on a facade anymore. And so I think have fun with do, do a cribs tour. You could do, you know, hashtag McSherry challenge, hashtag McSherry cribs. Um, why don't you do, if you're, if you're a parent with a, with a small child, do a crib cribs tour. I want to tour <laughs> I <love> that crib. 
<laughs> let me see that crib. <laughs> yeah, let me see that crib. Right here, we got this fine wood crib right here. This is where my, my little G be sleeping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, so have fun with it because I, I've never had a client say to me, oh, man, those videos you do, that's kid stuff. Or I don't like all the fun that you're having. Or, you know, has there been haters on occasion? And I think this is a good place for us to finish. The answer is always going to be yes. There's going to be somebody who hates on you or says negative stuff about you and then has nothing to do with you. It's all about them. Sure. Right? So and how do you handle that hater aid that uh, has anybody ever said or commented or or, or disliked something? I think there's no dislike button, I don't think, on, mm -hmm. on Facebook. Well, but. well, I think it's a good thing. I think it shows that you're getting attention and you're doing things that are – or getting people's attention. I feel like if you're not getting any hate, then you know no one's really paying attention. So um, you're gonna have that. And I think it's an indicator that you're doing something right and just keep doing it. Yeah, I love that because it's, if they're not looking at it, they can't hate on it, right? And then just keep in mind that typically these people are, are what we call trolls, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't, don't feed the troll, don't feed into it, don't like start re replying back to them. Misery loves company. They're just trying to bring you down to their level. And you know, mm -hmm. a good response sometimes is, oh, I would love to see your videos. And then you hear crickets, crickets. Exactly. Crickets, crickets. Exactly. So don't yeah. worry. I think most of that's built up in people's mind. Like we are our own worst obstacle. They're not doing it because they feel like if they do it, they're going to say, oh my gosh, your face, your voice, whatever it is, they don't like it. And that's not the case. If you have people who follow you and you surround yourself with positive people, you know, they're going to be supportive. Right? Right. I agree. And like you said, usually negativity is a reflection of something they're dealing with. So, you know, really, you know, you, you, you could just maybe maybe pray for them and hope they get through that process and that hatred that they're going through but uh, you know and and just use it as fuel and and, that, and that's something i do as well i mean i i love like in the south they they'll say bless your heart child <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> which basically means like i'm praying for your soul yeah, exactly. you need the prayer you need it <laughs> exactly oh man I agree. so I like that. I, I appreciate you. Appreciate you taking the time out. Anything you want to say kind of as we close out a little inspiration, something to get them to kind of power through what, what motivates you every day, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate you guys watching and um, you know, I want to engage with you guys and um, you know, for me, it's um, something that really helps me is, you know, about like creating content is that, um, just real quick, someone said to me one time, they're like, hey, um, John, and this was like three years ago, you didn't smile in your video. And I was like, well, that kind of like got me angry. I was like, I just worked so hard to make this video. I, you know, I was so nervous, but I made it. And you could at right. least like celebrate what I'm doing. But what he said was really powerful because then I was like, I became conscious of it. So then, you know, the more I smiled, the more I loved my videos. And the more I love the videos, the more success that I created and the more success, the happier I got on the videos. So really it's just about getting that momentum started and right. you know don't fake it where you're lying about what you're doing but if you have to fake the happiness or fake the smile at first do that because that 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 energy is going to create success and that success is going to create happiness so i think that's the best advice i could give you that's fantastic and, and it's it does take practice you know like even when you're like if i'm if i'm talking like this you can see that I, like i'm smiling but if i'm not i'm like and it's just it's really totally different like mm -hmm, you or uh, and, it, and it does really make you feel mm -hmm. better um i, I want to end this is i'm just looking at this i have this on my wall here it's one of my favorite quotes so it's impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it impossible is not a fact it's an opinion impossible is not a declaration it's a dare impossible is potential impossible is temporary impossible is nothing so yeah. go out and get it j man's ed talks we thank you john baron mcsherry for being here with us today and don't forget we're going to put the link to his show in the comments you have a challenge if you choose to accept it you don't have to just raise your hand and say i choose to be average if you don't want to do the challenge we understand uh, but we we're here to help you step outside your comfort zone and do great things so Jeremiah's J Man Monero, J Man Speaks. Make it a great day. Thank you, John. Bye, guys. Have a good one.